Hi guys, Dorota Palicka International, nail artist and educator here and today I have prepared a really beautiful nail art for you. Have a preview of it in here. I hope you really enjoy watching this tutorial and learning those new techniques. So let's start. This is going to be a really, really pretty and spring designs and I cannot actually wait to show you because uh, I'm excited for it. So we've got the tips ready in here. And the first thing we need to start with is some ombre. I'm going to definitely go for some pink, purple and orange. So the purple is 242 and we are going to place it at right on the bottom. Then some pink one, 238. You don't have to place them perfectly uh, well. Uh, because we are going to use this magic sponge technique, 239. And then let's start blending. So in order to be able to blend, you can see it, I've got the collection of some sponges and they are all different ones. Um, I'm going to cut a fresh piece. So I like to recycle the things and I'm going to cut it on that part, just so we can use for another design. That's actually a nice color combination as well. There we are, so I can keep this one and also I can cut it, it like this, so I will have some spare one. Pass a fresh one, always remove any bits and pieces. Now guys, you have to know how to do this ombre. It works fantastic for the clients in the sounds as well, for a short news, long news, two colors, three colors, four, five, whatever, like as many colors as you want. Uh, so the first idea about this ombre is to blend the color in. So I'm, I'm touching and I'm massaging it in. I usually try to do the size, uh, the sponge to be the size of the actual ombre, uh, needle, which I'm doing, the ombre with. And you can see it, depending how strongly we wanted it, uh, that's actually could do. The longer you play with it, the nicer um, results you will get. So let me do up and down as well. And that looks actually really pretty. If you want the colors to be as intense as on those needle, you have to sprinkle it with the clear acrylic powder. And so let's sprinkle it. And then give it a cure. And then we can cure it. A good question, what we can use except of the acrylic, acrylic powder. powder. So I personally prefer the ac clear acrylic powder. I wouldn't use white or any color. Well, it could possibly work with white, but it would give you a more pastel -y results. The clear one works fantastic. Mm, you could also use the dip in powder. Um, again, you will do it in a clear, if you don't have a clear acrylic powder, because uh, that's a good question, cameraman. And probably I will also answer the question because it was coming up really a lot. Um, why did I sprinkle it with the acrylic powder? So if I wouldn't sprinkle it with the acrylic powder, you will have to do like, I don't know, 15 layers with the gel polish, probably. And because we have used those acrylic powder, the blending of the actual colors is, is super quick and easy and um, and it's just much faster like honestly guys it's so much faster so I'm just cleaning it okay and then add another layer so what you can do it is um, first of all you could either use what you've got on the sponge or you could just make it more pigmented depending on the really on the results you want to achieve I'm just going to make them exactly um, same pigmented like the other ones. So three layers are perfect. Now let's do a bit more. No, that's plenty. And you can see it, what is happening, like how pigmented it is the, the second layer, because we've got those acrylic powder in there, it's just so much um, stronger the colors. 
and just turn it your way. So I'm just going up and down and on the sides. And this is such a pretty way of doing an ombre. Obviously, the longer you play with it, the nicer results you will have as well. Like, make sure there is no fluffy bits and pieces. Uh, that's why I like to always do it on the forms. If you get some other fluff, you can just remove it. So I'm just going to touch up this place more. And that's it ready for curing. Okay, get ready with the matte top coat. And the reason why we want the matte top coat is I want to be playing with some chromes in there as well. So matte top coat over it. Actually, maybe we could. No, it has inhibition layer. So matte top coat in. I'm sometimes trying to shortening the ways of, of doing some things and then I realize, no, there isn't a shortcut for, for the things. So matte top in there and then cure it. And this way we will go like this, okay? So um, just a bit of theory. So for this ones I have used some, as you can see it, yellow, uh, orange and a pink. Um, but you can do some other combination. This one was really pretty one as well. Uh, and yes, some of you actually leave the comment when I say, and I was searching for the example of the bad ombre, obviously a purple and the turquoise one is, looks amazing. It's like a mermaid tile, uh, the Ariel. So um, it lost looks fantastic. Uh, that's the one we did it. That's a quite good one as well with the blue in there. And this one is a clean one. So yeah, I like to keep it the sponges for a future designs. Uh, obviously you will use it a few times and then you have to be it. But anyway, let's move into the next uh, next part. So we are going to grab the black foil design gel and you need to save this um, like ombre tip. You need to try it because the spring summer time is all about ombre. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, like it looks fantastic. And even when um, Easter time, like, you know, we're doing those ombre and then eggshells designs, so um, you definitely need to do it. Now, those uh, designs, because the ombre itself is quite strong and, and, and uh, it can be a design itself, we are going to go for a very minimalistic look, like a nice and spring, but not over the top. Okay, so on the first one, oh, let's maybe do the heart shape on this one. So on the first one, we are going to paint some heart shape. Leave some empty space for the flowers. Come down. Add some detail on the top. That's already look pretty and it could do it even in the um, black color itself. Absolutely, it could. Okay, so we've got a heart shape. And then give it a 60 seconds cure. On this one, we are going to go rounded shape. And what I'm doing, you can see it, I'm just like starting a tiny bit before the place I have finished. Now you want to ideally have some sort of blob on your brush and in order to pick up that blob on your brush, you just go and go like this and then you've got blob. If you pick up the paint like this, then you've got a straight line and you have no blob. Mm. That's quite simple. Let's keep it this way. Next one. So on next one, I want to go maybe a wee chain. Try to don't use your brush for dots. I do that really often and it's quite not good. 
It's very not good. <laughs> it's terrible. Because then the tip of the brush becomes uh, broken. Now, there was actually um, on the Facebook group, which we ran as well, there was some question regarding on how to prep the brushes. And I actually need to do the video, guys, for you on how to prep the brushes. I need to do the video with the color chart of the fiber gels. I need to do so many things. Then I had the request to put the upvoted gel polish uh, as a separate, um, separate, uh, listing rather than choose the color. Now I'm just painting some rounded shape and then we'll place lots of flowers on the bottom. So you can either do it or you can keep it as an empty space. Here this one. Grab the one which we just done it. And even if it has the matte top coat, what I like to do it, you don't have to do this guys. There is the only reason for it is it just gives nicer surface, um, removes an uh, extra thickness from the nails and the light is going to reflect much nicer. So if I'm fussy about the design and I like the design, I would go and do this step. It doesn't cost me much of the time. If I'm not bothered about how the tips look, then I wouldn't do this step and I would just paint straight away on the matte top coat. This is a, another question which comes up really, really often. So I'm trying to just cover all the questions. Now on this one, we will go quite simple. So I will be doing a kind of swirly look. And then another one here and there. Okay, that's enough. And then let's cure it. Okay, we can grab the next thing and this is going to be the gold chrome. And again, you could use the finger or you could use the cotton, not cotton, uh, the eyeshadow applicator. I quite like to work with my finger. I feel like it gives best results. Again, I leave it, it entirely up to you. No, that wasn't the first one. That The heart was first, okay. So I'm picking up like a tiniest amount of the chrome ever and just dab it in there. And then wrap this in. to get a nice gold surface. Okay, we've got a nice gold on the first one, second one, usually the longer you kind of rub the pigment, the shinier it becomes, you can see it here, it becomes shinier. I quite like uh, painting that way because uh, what is happening when you're painting with, so sometimes you see me using the um, transfer foil gel glue, the, the transparent one. It's pretty cool because it takes the transfer foil really well, uh, but also at the same time it's not, um, because it's clear and because of its consistency, I cannot pre paint precisely. Uh, so I wouldn't be able to paint like such a thin line like this one probably. Uh, with the black gel, I can do it much easier. And you could also use it for a transfer foil as well. And I use it depending on the design. So sometimes I would use it with the chrome and sometimes I would use it with the actual transfer foil. I love, to, they look so pretty already. Like there is not much stuff going on on them. And I love it, like I love it. Such a simple, uh, simple look, very elegant. Now let's do some flowers. So I'm just going to clean my finger and then we are going to pick up some pink, the one which we have used it, and purple and other colors we've got in here. So a purple one, drop of it, a drop of the 
pink one and of course I need the paint on French gel. Fantastic. What other? We could actually do this orangey one as well. So we will have, we will keep in this kind of three color range. And the green. Oh gosh, I need green. So green is a hundred, uh, 241. And then plain those flowers and Okay, so this one, so I'm checking what kind of color will um, work best. And I don't want to be placing the same color on uh, what we've got on the background. So the first one is a purple one. So I'm just mixing my purple with the white. And that's me ready for a painting. Go into the just a drop more of the lighter color and then start painting those flowers. We want them to be kind of very simple. If you've got like a wee sticking out here like I do, I have rolled it my brush and I'm trying to reshape it. The reason for it is I have cured some product and uh, that's why I need to also show you the video on how to um, clean the brushes as well. So you will know how to save this brush because I, I will be able to save it uh, even if it did cured. Okay. Then inside put a couple of those darker color. Go into the pink one. and paint another flower. I'm actually going to probably trim this here for this tutorial so I can show you straight away what I'm doing as well. Okay, another flower in. And I'm just going to trim this here. If you've got a really stubborn uh, hair, I mean, the reason for this hair do that to me is I've got some product which is cured on that part of the brush. You can see it, it doesn't move as, as nicely. And it's my fault for leaving the brushes on the, with out of the lid on the disc. So you want to take those single hair and you want to just trim it. And you can do so, oh, the, you can also see it, there is those cured product there, the white one. So what I'm doing now is I'm gently scraping it off and the brush starts to move nicer, you can see that already here. So the cured product is in that place is here. Here on this side as well. So you could do that. Then take a wipe and reshape your brush. So now if even if I go like um, um, different position, the, the brush should hold in place because we have removed uh, some of the problematic area with the cured product. What other color I want in here? Another purple one. But just a wee tiny one on the top. Fantastic. Then grab some green. And again, you can mix it a little bit with the brush. Now, this is, isn't one stroke. I'm just kind of uh, have a mixture. It's more of a freehanding. I've got a mixture of all those different colors on my brush. It feels a bit too bright. So what I did is I have deepened in my brush into the black color and you can see it. It looks much better. It doesn't stand out as much. So I'm just adding those leaves. Okay, darken this one. So just a pure black on my brush. 
and a drop of green. Fantastic, swap to the D-liner brush. Black, it was already on my brush, so I'm just darkening my green. And we are going to paint a very thin lines. Somewhere here, somewhere there. Okay, and now is the time to give it a cure. I love them so much. A little bit more detailed because we have been doing quite a few um, very easy designs. So I, I'm trying to use you guys um, do the mixture of the different things for you. You know, some of them to be um, more advanced and then very easy ones and like all sort of different things. Okay, another flower there. So a petal here. And petal there. And you can see it, I'm, I'm not, I'm trying to pick up messy colors like so lots of different colors on my brush and this way it gives a really mm, nice results. So I've got some petals with the lighter color and darker color. Um, another tip I can give you guys, if you don't uh, know how to squeeze the five petals or it might be difficult, make a dot in the middle and then start painting from the dot so all, every single petal meets in there. Okay, I'm quite happy with this one. Let's squeeze the orange. Again, I didn't clean my brush too much, so I've got some pink, orange and white. And I want some two petals here. And then maybe a separate flower just in there. So this one is outside the heart. A bit uh, of the pink one as well, so it stands out more. Okay, and I've got another flower in. Go into my green and black. Again, I even didn't clean my brush. Add some leaves. So this way you've got like a very um, more realistic results because every leaf is different in the nature. So we've got some different shades. Straight away because I've got this mixture on, mixture on my brush, I'm just going to add a couple. Single one didn't feel right, so I had to paint it two, and then I'm going to add two more to cure it. Again, so pretty one. Next one. So on this one, and uh, we need to do a purple one. Basically, I'm just touching with my brush now. And then some pink ones here. Green leaves. And then green leaves on the other side. And then give it a cure. Okay, last one. <laughs> so green leaves, just because I had this color on my brush. 
clean the brush and then here I want to go for some purple again you can also see how nicely my brush behaves now, uh, now after we have tidy it up ideally I love to so basically when I have a break like we don't record it for a day or two um, and I leave the brush or I don't train my brush things become much more tougher uh, for me I love it my brush is the most like uh, once I do a couple of the designs so at this stage now my brush would allow me to do more and more advanced work um, and I love it uh, painting and that kind of like when the brush is warmed up to my hand uh, same the um, D-liner brush it was actually uh, sometimes like you, you can see me struggling on the beginnings of the of the video before my brush kind of starts moving nicely uh, so keep that always in mind um, when you want to do very detailed design on your client uh, that's ideally you want to kind of get your brush ready for that painting you know it's same like going into the gym and you would start actually we started gym with the camera one again i'm so happy for it uh, but you know if you go start. i start i know yes okay he goes like constantly for the la for so many years and i just started after seven years of um, not going into the gym so i was so sore some days like oh my goodness guys it was terrible but see because the brush is uh, so because the brush train like warm up uh, before the ex big exercises has allowed me to do more precise work uh, you know i could paint it much more detail it even with this thicker one so like i could flatten it nicely and i could paint even a very thin line inside the leaf there we are and before i was struggling for the first move i was struggling to paint around the shape of pe petal like a dot <laughs> okay another one mm, what i did i have picked up a drop of the green color so i didn't want to uh, have a pure black it could be maybe too strong for this one we didn't do the lines so let me do them here just so every single design looks kind of the same so two lines, one line in there. Honestly, I love this one so much. Such a delicate work. And a little bit more advanced for a change. Next one. Basically, we just have to later on swap our brush into some white color and then that's our design finish it. So let me clean it. And to clean it, I'm using the UV cleanser, a tiny wee drop of the UV cleanser, then pick up the color I want to go for. So we are going to be working with the white. And you can see, because I had so much black on it, um, the white turned it gray. So I let my brush drink it those lighter color. Again, we shouldn't be using um, brushes for doing the dots, but I'm going to use it. So a couple of the dots. You can even pick it up and do like, um, that's too strong. So I have removed all the product from my brush and I'm just touching some places. That's it, don't play it anymore. I, I quite like this one, so let's maybe go like this. It's almost like a weave flower wreath. Oh gosh, I probably pronounced it terribly wrong. <laughs> Flower bouquet. I think that's nicer. That sounds better. Oh, and I, I forgot. I probably speak fast. I have realized that some of you watch with the um, 
uh, subtitles. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and if I'm speaking so fast, you cannot, the computer cannot like actually really translate it properly what I'm saying. But this is also probably because of the accent I've got <laughs> and the fact that I'm pronouncing some words quite wrong. We actually had one video um, um, flagged, I would say. <laughs> that there was a bad words in there. I don't use bad words. So probably it was just me pronouncing something completely wrong. Okay, couple of the dots. We all love dots, dots finishing of the designs. Oh my goodness, I actually love it so much. And now I've got dilemma. Matt or shiny? Because <laughs> I quite like them. You know, what should I do is, but no, because Chrome needs to be top coated. So what I could do it is I could top coat the entire design and then, and matte, and then only go through the shiny place in the Chrome. So we would have shiny and matte. Oh gosh, this is always the biggest dilemma. Okay, this one is finished as well. Matte or shiny? Maybe we should go matte. It will... I know we always go for shiny. <laughs> okay, so let's do, because it's a pretty design, let's make it a complicated one. So we are going to go for matte on all of them and because we probably don't want the chrome to be matte, we will have to make the chrome shiny. <laughs> okay, so first one is matte. Once I take it out from the lamp. Next one. Yeah, cameraman got always good taste. He was the one to push me when I started doing the nails. I came home so proud that I made a nice set of the nails and then he was like, this is not straight, this is bulky here. You touched the cuticle, I was like, ah. <laughs> but um, it was a good learning curve. Um, another tip guys I can give you as well, like when you're learning, take a picture of your work. Uh, something what the human eye cannot see it is visible on the camera. So obviously to me this design like might look pretty and then when I rewatch it on the YouTube I want to cry because I'm angry I didn't see something uh, which is visible in the camera. Uh, so take a picture of your work and then zoom it in to see. When I was entering competitions and I was doing like a box at nail art I was basically zooming in every single piece of the tip to pick up any mistake. Even if I couldn't see it I was fixing it on the actual tip. Uh, so overall, the, the picture was perfect. Like there was no mistake which the human eye could spot because they were only visible in the zoom it in camera and I fixed it this uh, zoom it in picture. Then I was taking that picture again to check if this mistake was still in there, crazy. You know, so some, some work took me like months to complete. <laughs> um, obviously I have no time for that now. It looks actually, hmm. The chrome is still shiny-ish. Should we top coat it? No. No, don't need it. No, don't need it. Yeah, even a matte chrome looks... I like it reflects the light. I, I don't think so. I'm going to do anything else about it because I like it as well. Uh, I'm glad we both agree, cameraman. We always agree. Next week. We usually... <laughs> Yeah, it gives a different feel to it. As I say, we could go through with the shiny top coat to make it... it... More standard. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's nice. It's I just want touch. to check... I want to just check it. It's It reflects the light more. No, but I like it. It's a different one. Well, let's go for a completely matte look. I think it's quite nice to have it for a change. Okay, this one is so pretty. I actually love them all. 
and I hope guys you did really enjoy this tutorial as well and you loving those uh, beautiful I actually the, the more I look on them and especially all together the more I love them such as delicate look fantastic one let's make them nice and pretty before I show you the final results here we are that's what we have oh they're so pretty they are really pretty cute that's the kind of stuff I, I really like it uh, on the nails and I hope you guys really like it as well if you did hit those like button pretty please or subscribe if this is your first uh, video you are watching sending you huge glittery hugs and bye for now